Okay, let's get started. Hello to all our global attendees and thank you so much for taking the time to join us today for our webinar. So today we will be sharing five tips in Asana to keep your team connected and coordinated. So some housekeeping. As a friendly reminder, you will receive the slides and the recording in a follow-up email after this session. And please make use of the webinar console to ask us any questions. But if we don't get to them, please don't hesitate to reach out on the community forum. Okay, let's jump in. First, we'd like to introduce ourselves. So, hi guys, I'm Neve, and I work on the customer education team. And I really concentrate on delivering a lot of our educational content, so our free training webinars. And in this session, I'm really excited to share exactly how we use Asana internally with you guys. And I'm Katie, I am on Asana's EMEA marketing team. I work on making our customers more aware of how Asana can help them and their teams be more connected and productive. And I think in this session, I'm really excited to chat a little bit about how you can team, keep your team connected on a social level, because that's something I think we're all being impacted by. And just to mention before we jump into our agenda, Asana is actually currently offering free subscriptions to organizations that are on the front lines of fighting COVID-19. So if you work at one of these organizations, please feel free to share this link. And um, please also feel free to share with your networks um, and make sure that you, they know that that's available. So our agenda today, we're going to share some interesting findings from a survey Asana did uh, just over the past few weeks actually on remote work, we'll also be focusing on clarity. So what does that mean? Why is it so important as we try to coordinate and collaborate across teams? And then we're going to move to five ways within Asana that will specifically help you work remotely. But to make the best use of your time, please ensure you submit your questions as we will be wrapping up with a live Q&A. So let's jump into it. At Asana, our mission is to help global teams thrive. And so now we believe that mission is more important than ever. We are in a new environment where organizations are having to adopt their business practices, and that is challenging. Through our work with teams of all sizes, we've learned that there are some key conditions that enable teams to thrive. As I mentioned, our mission is to help teams thrive. So we wanted to understand how teams are working in these times and how they manage the transition to remote work. So you can see some really key stats here. We commissioned this research on this particular area at this particular moment in time to understand this. The Anatomy of Work remote team study was conducted on behalf of the SANA by Censuswide. So we surveyed over 5,000 knowledge workers in a variety of regions just this past April. There are some key findings and you can see them here displayed on the screen. It's not a huge surprise, but 62% of respondents have increased their use of collaboration tools. But what's really interesting is 19% of people are using these tools for the first time. That's a massive challenge to onboard a new tool in pretty difficult circumstances. 67% of employees did not have a suitable remote work environment. So whether that means a lack of reliable Wi-Fi or a proper workspace or even a laptop or PC they could use at home, this indicates a lack of readiness specifically amongst UK organizations in a pretty unprecedented situation. And a final stat I wanted to share from our study is that 79% of UK workers miss the social element of their work, an amount that was second only to their Australian counterparts. This really drives home the importance of maintaining those social ties, even when we are physically distanced. We'll look at some tips in Asana that you can use to assist with this in the latter half of the webinar. So today we're gonna to talk about one of the key principles that we believe is crucial to team success at all times, but especially in this current climate, clarity. So what do we mean by clarity? Clarity is having everyone on the same page about what your goals are, who is responsible for the different actions that ladder to those goals and knowing when those tasks are being worked on. So to enable business continuity and to continue to support teams as they operate under extraordinary circumstances, clarity is really crucial. Having clarity on your team is important, but it becomes even more so when you're not sitting next to each other. Sometimes when you have a manager or coworker right nearby, it can be easy to lose track of priorities and you might start to wonder, what should I work on next? Here at Asana, we've developed the pyramid of clarity with the aim to empower teams and organizations. Asana as a work management platform brings clarity to your organization so you can avoid the dreaded work about work. When I say work about work, we mean those tasks that take time away from the skilled, meaningful work you enjoy doing and that you were hired to do. 
So I'm talking about email scheduling, those unnecessary meetings or syncs that can be massive time sucks. We found that the average knowledge worker devotes 60% of their time to this work about work phenomenon. So let's take a look at the pyramid of clarity. Mission at the top is the driving force by, behind every team and organization. From this mission derives all your objectives, projects, processes, and tasks that can make this mission come to life. The pyramid of clarity demonstrates how work is interconnected. It becomes transparent that work needs to be done, what impact it has, and the accountability of who is doing what and what by when. Organizations can also become more efficient at distributing workload because there's a sense of transparency. If you're working from home, take some time with your team to make sure everyone's clear on what each team member is working on. This could be in a project or task in Asana. The key point is that there's a place everyone can refer back to when they aren't sure about what everyone else is working on and working towards. Last year, we, discovered, we conducted another survey. It was called the Anatomy of Work. And we found that people are, when they're clear on their workload, their motivation actually doubles. That's a big statistic. Now that we've spoken about how important clarity is, let's talk about how we can achieve it. So our first tip that we're coming into today is to ensure your team aren't spending all of their time sifting through emails, going through those different chat channels, just really trying to find all of that key information that they need. So we recommend using drop-in projects to replace all of these multiple areas and all these multiple chats and have this one drop-in project like you see in this slide. So it's just a great way to collect all the information about different initiatives that are going on and collect actionable items. So be they like work related actionable items or just some reference items and for fun. So I find that like this really helps maintain the company culture, like sharing what you've been watching on Netflix or some of your work from home tips. And just like, again, providing that transparency and clarity, making sure information isn't siloed just into those email chains or in direct messages when you might need to be pulling them out from other places. Our second tip is keeping teams up to date with status updates. So posting about your status, like it's going to allow people to check in regularly and see what's going on. You can have these color codes, so green being like everything's on track, all going good, yellow saying that this is a bit at risk, we're having some issues here, or red, off track, things are going terribly, we're having some issues. And you could also very specifically mention people. So you can see here we've mentioned some people and I'll talk you through how to do that later on. And this is going to give them an alert that they're being mentioned, but also you're providing more context and clarity in your update. So it's keeping connected with your work and your team projects, your team and your projects can help move forward. Also keeping those notifications going. Also, when you update a status, what will happen here is that it's going to update in real time if you have any portfolio. So if you're an Asana business user, this status update is going to directly impact and update your portfolio. So that will keep everyone in the loop. Exactly. And just to add to that, I think we all have a bit of Zoom fatigue. And so when you're posting <laughs> these regular updates to Asana, it means you can use meetings to tackle blockers and address strategy instead of having to go around the room or the Zoom room in the current climate, simply listing what's already on your project plan. Um, so I think that's a real help. Yeah. Cool. Uh, our third tip today is a simple but really important one. Make sure you use comments to provide context to tasks and projects. We are all working remotely for the most part, so there isn't an opportunity to catch someone by the coffee machine to communicate that you marked a task complete or why. So when you're not sitting next to your team, there's no such thing as over communicating. Make use of this, ability, this technology so you can provide color to your actions. And then our tip number four, indicate what's happening with custom fields. So custom fields let you add that additional data to tasks within your Asana projects. You can create a field for stage, priority. I know I use the one for cost quite a bit or anything else that's important to your team and your company. It just lets individuals have clarity around work happening across the entire organization. And our final tip of the day, set boundaries with away features. So we're going to demonstrate this in a little bit, but this is a game changer for me, I think. When we start working from home, none of those structures that are typically in place in our day-to-day -day activities are there. Boundaries can get really blurred. It's easy to start work right when we wake up and then we forget to eat because 
there's no one there to have lunch with, suddenly doing the laundry is a little bit of a priority. Our workday doesn't end at a typical time because we're already at home. So with the do not disturb feature, you can clearly communicate what your working hours are, as well as mark yourself away. What I would recommend is agree with your team on what your working hours are, and those can be flexible. We're in unprecedented times and people have other responsibilities at home at the moment. But when you set them in Asana, it makes it communicates it to the rest of the team. All right, that was me jumping ahead, getting excited to show you guys about all of these tips in real life. So let's put some theory into action. So hopefully you're all able to see my screen here. And let me just show you this uh, content team. So our, our team's drop-in project. What you can see here is we have a number of different sections, you know, based out on actionable items, for fun, for reference. And we also list out our monthly priorities. So I think one of the first things that we can do here is just add in any tasks and any items that are coming up. So like I have a need that I need one of my uh, colleagues to action and that is discuss the you know, May campaign. Discuss May campaign and let me see, I'm going to assign that to my pal Sarah Ann because we're just going to check in before the month is up how this went. And I can add this in. So immediately I've got an action item and I can add in any items. If I'm seeing anything new coming in on Netflix, I can add in. This was a really good reference. This is something I recommend that you watch. But what I want to do first of all is I want to provide a status update on this project. So you can see here we've got all these different views. One of the views that has very recently been updated in Asana is this progress view. So if I click here, you see I'm able to see this is on track. Uh, Katie provided an update for us yesterday for how things are going with the um, actual content that we're delivering. And I want to give an update on how the team is handling with re re working remotely. So what I can do is update the status. And from here, I can say working remotely has been fully transitioned. We are doing it. We are working from home. What's the status? I'm going to say it's on track. And let's see, I can also add in more information if I want. And I can add in, yeah, what, let me see. I can add in saying things are going, things are going good or going great. Bar the odd internet issue. I don't know if it's the same for you guys, but um, well, it was kind of stormy earlier on this week and my internet was not hacking it. So that was a bit of an issue. But apart from that, things were going really well. You're also able to drag and drop any milestones at the moment because this is really just an ongoing project. We don't have many milestones going on, but I could put in any milestones here and say like, okay, we've hit some milestones. But what I can also do, and what I mentioned earlier in the slides, is I can mention people. So when you use the app button in Asana, you are able to mention people. But I just wanna make sure that everybody here is going to be notified so you can see all of our project members, nine people will be notified and post. So you can see here, all of this has been updated. And we've got these recent updates, everything going on. This is also gonna give people an opportunity to comment back on it. So again, if people want to discuss this progress with me, they can do so directly on the project. And I can say, you know, here's where I can mention somebody. So at Sarah Ann, how's your internet now? She was having some issues. How's your internet now? And you can also emoji if you want or attach in any images and content. But I'm going to comment there and direct this conversation and progress so that everybody's got clarity on how things are going. Our next tip that we can go to is to make sure that we provide some context with chat and conversations. So let me go back to our list project. I just want to check in on some things. Like I've asked Katie, um, so I was asking her about this um, product launch and Katie was asking me about an cam email campaign around it. So this is due tomorrow, but I've already released it. So I can say, I'm gonna mark this off as complete. I'm gonna to say to Katie, close and early because the, you have been added, you have been added already. So what this is going to do is this is going to let Katie know because we're collaborators and it's providing some context. So she's not thinking I just closed it off because I'm bored of it or done with it or that I'm not going to do it. I'm saying, no, I've done this, done it early and I've added you in already. So providing in those comments and I can also add in like fun things that are going on. I've been kind of lucky recently. We've got some dogs of Asana. So I can say, look at me working in with my little pal Shay. 
and I can add in a picture of me enjoying one of the well one of the things I really enjoy working from home is getting to work with a little fluffy pal and you can slowly but surely see me there working with my pal Shay. So other things that we can do are add in custom fields. So if you're looking at this project, what you can see is not only do we have these tasks and these like sections breaking down what the different work is, we also have some color coded context of what's going on. So there's a field here about working from home and we're saying like, yeah, all of these tasks are related to working from home and whether they're in progress or not. So this is in progress, this has now been done. So I can put in just another code saying it has been done or I can say, yeah, it's in progress. I can add in more fields and more context to that. I'm a huge fan of custom fields just because I find like, you know, projects, it's not the most exciting topic in the world, but adding in these color codes just make it so much more visually impactful. And I'd also recommend like maybe with your colleagues discussing what colors are going to mean what, but to show you quickly how to add a field to a project, you see here if I go up to fields. So from here is where I can turn on or off, what are the items that I can see? So maybe if this was just purely a reference project, I might not need to have information about the assignees or the due dates, you know, if it's just like an ongoing reference point. But I do want to see that. And again, if you turn them on or off, it's going to maintain the integrity of the data within. But I'm going to add the field. And I have two options to add a field to this project. So I can either choose one from the library. So that's any field that we've previously saved before in our Asana account. Or I can create a new one. And I'll just do a simple me a content team or content priority so we know it's for us and what it's about so I said there are three field types drop down is the only color coded option and probably my favorite text and number are both dynamic fields but with drop down i can define what the options are going to be so i'm going to say option one um high priority and say medium priority and then why not a low priority, less enthusiastic about that, and I can add them in. And just note, so by default, it's gonna give you those kind of traffic-like color codes, but there's far more options to that. So why not have a lovely magenta for high priority? Then our medium items, they can go in, yeah, why not a nice sky blue? And then low priority, we'll go with a deep green. And from here, I can add it to the library so that I know that I can use this for other projects. And there are also options to like notify people when this has changed. So if it is a field that you've created about a topic that's really important, you can put on a notification setting. And I think then for business users, there's also a lock available saying only I may edit this field. But once I've created the field, it is instantaneous. What it's going to do is add this field directly to my project and now I've got these options. So I can mark off which items are high priority things we need to work on, which are a bit more medium, or, and which items not so useful right at the moment. But note also what you can do with your fields is you can filter by them. So I can like filter by what is priority, filter by what's in progress, and filter by work from home. And you can also sort, so you can sort within the sections, or if you just want to sort by the, um, custom field itself. So this is everything that's in progress, everything that's done, and everything that does not have a status, it's still there at the bottom. Same for here, sorting by high priority and sorting by medium priority. So that is custom fields, really visually impactful. And again, I highly recommend that you guys test them out just so that people get to see these different like, visual meanings that are going on in the project. And then final thing that we're going to talk about is setting boundaries. So Katie mentioned that this is a kind of relatively new feature and it's that's our do not disturb and it's going to be found in our profile area. So if I go to the right hand side, you see where my profile icon is, this little picture. So what this is going to show me is like if I have access to any other Asana spaces and also my profile settings. So here's where you can define your name. You can also add in your pronouns. You can put in your role or the department or team. So that way, if anybody clicked on you, that they'd be able to get that information. I also like including the about me. So, so I'm saying so if anybody clicks in, they're going to know that I'm in Dublin. Um, people can DM me on Slack if there's anything like quick. But if it's anything work related, please assign me a task on Asana. And we also have the option here to show me as a way. 
So you're able to mark off your, your away time and say, okay, I'm going to be away today and tomorrow. I wish, but I'm not. Actually, though, it is going to be a bank holiday next Monday. So I will be using this. So you can mark yourself off as away. And this is a preview. So anybody that's trying to assign you a task, they will still be able to do so. But let's say they're in a different region, so they won't have a bank holiday on Monday. So to know why I'm being a bit slow to respond, they can see that I'll be away. And you can also say, okay, send me notifications while I'm away or don't. But to further set those boundaries, and I don't want to be shown away for the moment, but to further set them, we can go into notification settings. So yeah, relatively new feature. I think this is um, do not disturb functionality is a good three weeks old, if not four. And what you can do is you can pause notifications. Now I've been finding this really useful um, over the last yeah, few weeks while we've been working from home because I don't know if it's the same for you guys, but I don't have a whole lot to do in the evening. And what I found like, especially at the start was just to pass the time because I could no longer see my pals. I would be spending more time on the computer and really just looking at work stuff. Whereas like, I don't want to get fatigued from work. There's already enough going on and I don't want you know, more general fatigue. So I can put in a do not disturb that means nobody can reach out and notify me about anything. And also schedule it. So I can say like five o'clock, that's my cutoff point. I do not want to hear anything more work related after five o'clock until nine o'clock the next morning. And you can also put in a do not disturb. Again, I know there might be some people who might have more childcare responsibilities than before. So you might want to say, okay, on Wednesdays, it's my turn with the kids. Uh, please don't disturb me. And Saturday and Sunday, that's our weekend. I do not want to know. Here you can also set up your email notifications. This is quite useful if any of you are at the start of using Asana, uh, just because you know if you need to get into the habit, I would ha recommend having those email notifications on so that people know or so that you know when something has gone on so you can be notified and start getting into the habit of checking in regularly. But yeah, this do not disturb functionality, I found to be a bit of a game changer because it's stopping me, like impeding myself and getting like, getting too involved at work after hours. So I think those are the main points and yeah, I highly recommend setting, even if it's something that you just want to do right now or as soon as this session is finished, notify it as being, do not disturb me from five o'clock to nine o'clock or whatever your working hours are, set those boundaries. So what I'll do is what we see next, I'm gonna hand you back to Katie and as I said, get in and change that do not disturb functionality. So just to recap on our five ways to use Asana for remote work. Firstly, obviously use drop-in projects to replace uh, any ideas or action items you have. Secondly, um, keep your team up to date with those status and discussion threads. Thirdly, provide context with conversations and comments. And then our fourth, indicate when and where work is taking place at custom fields. And finally, make sure you set those boundaries with that new feature, do not disturb, and make use of your profile to do so. While this is in no way an exhaustive list set of work from home strategies, by focusing on these tips, you and your team can start to work together with increased clarity and make it just a little bit easier to connect. Now, we would like to turn things over to you. Do you have a burning question about working from home? Um, maybe a tip or a strategy that's been working for you? We want to hear it all. Just add your question or comment in the question box and we will get to it. So we actually have a few that we've already started uh, to trickle in throughout the webinar. So one of our attendees has, has said, we're an agency and we use Asana and Slack and the communication around a task can sometimes get split. Um, where half the information is in Asana, half is in Slack. Any tips around organizing communication? So I can speak to how we organize communication at Asana. So we have some pretty, um, I wouldn't say strict rules, but we have, they're made known to people that we use Slack for those quick chats, quick questions um, to coworkers. Asana is where our projects happen. So it's actionable items. It's where you get a full picture of work. And then we rarely use email unless it's for external people or vendors. What I will say is if your information is getting caught between Asana and Slack, there is an integration that you can make use of um, that will demonstrate, uh, that will make sure that there's a single source of truth. Um, 
And just to show you guys then, sorry to interrupt, but so that everybody knows where all um, apps and integrations are, from your Asana account, where there is that question mark button, there's this apps and integrations area. So this is where all the integrations are. But yeah, you'll be able to see like again with Slack and this will also give you an idea of what it looks like. Super, thank you, Neve. Um, Neve, I guess I'll ask you to answer this. What is your top yep. remote work tip? Yeah, big fan of the do not disturb. And also now that it's not absolutely miserable outside, taking those lunch breaks and also like not bringing the laptop. And I'm really guilty of this, uh, especially when the weather is you know, not great, but really stepping away from the laptop, stepping away from work. If you can, I know that again, commitments and how things are it might make it harder for you but just trying to get that space away from work otherwise it just becomes that's all we're doing these days so right. even if you can just sit outside have a read or even if you are going to the laptop watching something that you can enjoy and just like getting out of this pure work mode so that your home space maintains being this home relaxed feeling outside of the office I totally agree. Um, if and I'd add to that, I think one of the tips I've learned is be flexible with your coworkers as well. Because as Neve mentioned earlier in the webinar, some of them have additional childcare responsibilities at the moment, or perhaps they're taking care of a relative or someone they live with. So I think we all just need to be a little bit more flexible and compassionate in how yeah. we deal with our coworkers and, and colleagues. So that'd be my main thing. Um, Super. So we have a question here and um, would love any tips to help uh, uh, to hear about anyone struggling with the habit of updating their tasks and statuses and due dates. I think, yeah, go okay, ahead. Go ahead I think for me, um, the status updates, you can set it so that you have to update it every week. And that's been a bit of a game changer, especially when you're working on multiple projects. Um, rather than something fall through the cracks and my manager having to come to me and say what's going on with this status, by just ticking that little box and making sure that um, weekly I'm updating it, it makes a big difference. What are your thoughts, Neve? Yeah, so there's the status updates. Then if you're ever just like concerned about due dates or wondering if things are up to speed or not, what I suggest doing is running advanced search reports. And this is an area that people don't always realize that's there and it is available for premium and business. So I see at the top where there's the search bar, what you're able to do from the bottom is advanced search. And this is where like it's a little filtering tool, but this is where you can pull all of your reports. And just to show you, you can pull like, tasks due within like seven days something like that I like to see uh, like just looking at incomplete tasks that are assigned to myself or assigned to a set group of colleagues you can also filter this out based on specific teams you see here and more so everything like I say in Dublin what's going on but yeah this is going to allow me to pull a report on all of these items just so I can check in okay are these dates up up to date are there overdue items that i've missed out on and just regularly checking in and just seeing like yeah how are we tracking or if there's anything that doesn't have a date it'll also pull in the report so you can see okay we need to get somebody on this we need to get somebody working on it and we need to get it properly assigned and dated great we have a question here from um, one of our attendees who works at a digital marketing agency, and they tend to have a problem linking their job handovers as it passes from one collaborator to another. So do you recommend using dependencies, milestones, or both? Um, I would recommend using dependencies and milestones. And just to show you an example, like again, some functionality that people don't always realize is there. So you see how we're, we're using this content project what I can do is like, if this is relevant to another project that you have going on, there's a functionality called um, multi-homing. So you see here where it says projects and we can see that it's in this example project and in this specific section, there's also a plus here. So I could move this into, let's say it's related to, or I want to hand this over to the education team. I can add this to that project and pick which section that it's going to be relevant to. So let's say this is going to be part of our contents, so I'm going to put it in with our requests. So now it lives in both places. This way, you know, I'm just highlighting of all the different places that it affects, but I'm handing it over to the other team so that it's part of their work now as well, and they're able to see that task. I can click into it, you'll be able to see in webinar requests down here, you see that this task, it now lives there as well. So 
I would use this multi homo functionality. And then maybe what could be an idea as well is you might want to have rules. And just to show you about rules, so these are a way of adding automations to your projects. And to do that, I guess up at the top here, there's rules. And you can have it so being like maybe again, okay, so linked to those custom fields that you have or linked to any particular section or column. You could say that, like, okay, every time it's added to this section, set it to in progress or done, or add this person to as a collaborator every time this task or type of task is added to this project. So that will mean that it's going to remove that manual step for you, but you'll be able to add the automation in. So it's going to do it automatically. And yet for any business users, you've got like um, custom rules. So you can make up any rules that are more relevant to you. And um, for um, premium users, there's a good set of rules that are available. All of that's available on the guide actually so on the asana guide and that will go through the types of rules available and some suggestions so if you like if you're using agile or if you're using like slack and gmail and outlook there's also integrations available with rules so yeah i would look at the automation side as much as possible rather than you trying to do manual steps great yeah rules make a big difference in our projects yeah. for sure and we have a question from Sophia, who's actually been tasked with organizing Asana training for the whole team. How do, would you recommend going about it? Uh, a practical in a webinar or would you just provide notes? So to, Sophia, that's obviously something a lot of people are going through. They're um, trying to train up people while working remote and it's no easy feat. I think what we found really helpful in the past is creating some guidelines internally for how you use Asana. It's a super flexible tool. So establishing your specific use of it is important for clarity and um, but also we have some really great resources that Neve's involved that she'll be happy to tell you about. Yeah so we run live webinars some more webinars similar to today but I also do um, live action webinars where I invite people into a demo environment so they can test all the features out. So what I find is like a good rule of thumb is hand it over to us to get people trained in on the basics so we've got a basic session weekly and also an advanced session weekly and then we do some other sessions where like live question and answers or about change management yeah these are all totally free but send people our way there's also the academy and that's just simply academy.asana.com if people can't come to a live session so use these resources they've been built out for you but i think the main things for you, for you to focus on will be like getting your processes up to speed but just to show you there's also a link um from that question mark about way or to the quick start guide and from here on this asana guide you can also look up if you just look up way of change this is going to bring us to let me see right when i've typed it wrong yeah there's an asana way of change which is in onboarding so team onboarding it's this full guide on how to do so so you can see here there's an asana way of change we also have onboarding checklists there's live webinars and on-demand version and we just talk about all the different strategies that you can have so there's a lot of resources here directly within the guide um, for you to introduce the tool but also for us to help train your colleagues with it so hopefully that'll help great and um, Neve, there's a, one of our attendees asking can we show how how you typically would use timeline yeah okay so timeline for anybody who's unfamiliar with it it's like the asana equivalent of a gantt chart so you see here and just to give you a quick update in case anybody um, has come back to asana so what you can do is see how we're looking at this project in the list view we can also look at it in a board view so this you can see all of our tasks if you prefer looking at it in this like column style view and then another view that's available here again on all premium and business projects is timeline and what this is going to do is it's going to take all of your sections and by then add in any tasks that have due dates are going to be directly on the timeline what you can do and you can do this uh, on the list or board but i think it's really visually impactful here is you can set the durations of your task and saying like i'm adding start dates and due dates so we're able to see how long things are working or like how long people are going to be like held up on one item and what you can do is you can drag and drop things around so you're moving them to different sections so i can say these actionable items i don't want them to be actionable anymore i want them to be fun items such as discussing the May campaign. So it's just a really visual way of looking at your tasks. 
in Asana. And also what you can do is, you know, those color codes that we looked at earlier. So like even when we created, you can use them as being like the visual of how you see your work in Asana. So I could say our content priority and all these high priority items. And then this not so important item. And rules are also available here. And you'll be able to see all of these unscheduled tasks. That's basically anything that doesn't have a due date. And what you can do is drag and drop them and that will give them a start date and due date. And if you wanted to show dependencies, so dependencies are really a way of showing what work is linked to or dependent on another item. And to do that, what is like, I think in Asana, there's nearly two ways to do almost everything. So two ways to create a dependency is if I click onto this strategy, and what I can do is over here where there's the task actions, where I see these three dots, it's only actions, I can add it in as a dependency. So make dependent on, and let's say FY19. Whoops, in here. This is gonna show me what the task is that it's dependent on. Or what I can also do is drag and drop. You see this little highlight here? And I can drag and drop these lines. This is going to link those items. So I find this to be really visual. And it's going to show me, okay, these items are dependent on these items. And whenever Katie completes this task, if there was anybody assigned to these tasks or they were waiting on them, they would also be notified, okay, you are now good to start working on this. So really visual. What I'd suggest doing is um, getting more used to using start dates and start dates and due dates together. So this way that you're able to see full durations and this is going to make a really visually impactful timeline project so your Asana Gantt chart. Let me know if that answers your question or if there's another timeline feature that I missed out on. No, I think that was great. Um, and then I think time for one final question. There's a question from our attendee, Paul. Do you have any ideas for ensuring clarity in assigning tasks? I think probably rules would be the best way to do that. Would it be me? Yeah, rules or um, we, again, back to those advanced search reports. And let me just open up the search reports here on the guide articles so that you can see them. Um, because what they'll be able to do is you'll be able to report on the assignees. You can use that to split out your work. And you see here also actually on the timeline, within the timeline, just to show you another way of sorting is you can sort by assignee. So this is going to show you the amount of tasks each person has per project. I find that to be a really useful way of making sure that when you're in any project that one person is not getting far more tasks than another. Like here you can see you've got some tasks that are unassigned. Thomas doesn't seem to be working on anything at the moment so I'm going to say our work from home pro or our remote policy. I want Thomas to be in charge of that and that's automatically going to reassign it. So yeah, I would keep checking in on reports just to make sure that there are things that are not amiss. And also viewing in your projects what the distribution is of the tasks per all your colleagues and who's working on it so that nobody's more overloaded than anybody else, that it's all distributed as fairly as can be. Brilliant. Yeah, I think that really provides clarity and a, a good, like big picture screenshot of what the team is yeah. working on. Super. Well, I think that's our last question for today. And with that, we will wrap up. Please continue the conversation and share your tips, questions, and ideas in our forum conversation. We'll be sure to share the link with you after this webinar. Thank you so much. And we'll make sure to share the presentation and recording with you also. Thanks, everyone. Hope it was useful. Keep in touch. Bye now. Bye, guys.